first thing I want to say is like this is not a knife fight. Where I'm not teaching modern combatants, I'm not teaching how to survive a knife fight, anything like that. So don't, please don't try to draw any conclusions about what you can do on the street with anything that we're going to do. I want to talk to Ron, Right? This is this is not <laughs> okay. So this is the the context that we're working from is that you are a, you know a good German burger in a city and somebody attacks you with a dagger. 1560, 57, right? So what we know from reading accounts of people being attacked with daggers is that it generally, although it is usually very surprising and it's something where somebody is you know, coming at you very quickly, these are usually sort of ritually structured. And what that means is there's a build up to it, right? There's this kind of like macho posturing, right? If you can see people in a bar doing like this kind of thing, right? In the modern world, that might lead to a fight. In 1560, that might be just people pulling their daggers out, that's, right? That's a step. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the context we're working on. If anybody pulls a dagger on you as a German citizen in 1560, their intent is to kill you, right? So when we look at Meyer's treatise, one of the things that changes quite a bit from a lot of his earlier stuff, especially the long sort of the Dussac, which is what we mostly worked on before, is that there is no longer any politeness. That's it. There's a lot of things where you end up getting a guy in and he says, break his arm. Break his arm and throw him on the, on the ground. Break his arm, slash his face, and then stab him in the head. Right? This is stuff where you, there are built-in actions where you can decide whether or not you're going to escalate the situation. But once you are in control of your attacker's dagger arm, you basically can do whatever you want to them, up to and including killing them. And this would generally, it's legally ambiguous, right? So there are basically every single time in the, the treatise that ends with Meyer killing a guy uh, could also have ended in a different way, right? So what we're mostly gonna focus on is controlling the dagger arm. That is our primary goal. Every single time we pick up this stuff and do it, right? Just controlling the dagger arm. What happens afterward is up to you. So we are gonna learn how uh, certain things work. So one of the things is we've got the cold steel rondelle trainers, right? And they are sort of triangular. And that's great because this is just sort of pressed polyurethane and you know whatever. It gives some rigidity and structure to it. Um, a lot of the daggers implicitly that are described as being used would have had edges. Some of the accounts that I've read of, of people being attacked with daggers actually talk about having having have been cut in the face. Um, so this these would have cutting surfaces, so we're gonna treat them as if they did. Okay? Um, so all that in mind, that's kind of the context that we're working on, right? If somebody's pulling a dagger on you, it means they're trying to murder you. It means, essentially, no holds barred, up to and including smashing their feet, stabbing them, you know, throwing them through a wall, that kind of thing. There are three ways to grip this guy. There is the classic, uh, I'm going to call this, what did I call it? I wrote it down, right? Um, this is just the forward grip. Right, so the dagger going out on the thumb side of your hand. I'm gonna take this off so that you can screw it up. Very easy, right? This is like the modern combative thing, right? Where people kind of talk about making these real close little slashing cuts, right? This again would be you're trying to stab a guy like in the tree. Or somewhere. Yeah. Um, I guess we need more daggers. Second grip is very hard, so that's what I'm gonna call the hanging grip. So the hanging grip is blade side extending from your pinky finger, right? And this is actually primarily what Meyer works with. Is this, is the, this is the guard, or this is the grip that he uses in most of his uh, actions for reasons that we're gonna get into in later ones. But this is basically the kind of the first best sort of thing. It's better for defense, it's good for a lot of things, okay? So you've got front grip, forward grip, Hanging grip. I'm going to call this one the half grip. Uh, this is grabbing it by the blade and using, you've got the pummel and you've got the blade as attacking surfaces, and those will be used for different things at different times. Okay? That's really all you need to know. We're going to work primarily with the hanging grip uh, because, again, that is what Meyer is mostly using for his stuff. So, there are, uh, we're going to introduce sort of four basic postures. Okay, so everybody, right foot forward, get in your deep Meyer stance. 
And the very first one, so note on the left hand, it can be anywhere, right? Just like the this act, remember? Sort of try to keep it in contact of your body somewhere. Um, you're gonna be using your left hand a lot, so keeping it probably forward rather than in the back is probably better. It's a little bit faster to kind of snap your arm out and make, uh, make a parry with your left hand. If it's in front, so usually put it on the chest, a lot of times you kind of see the blade of the hand sort of pointed out, and that just sort of, again, helps to kind of facilitate that structure that you need to make a parry if somebody's attacking, okay? So left hand can be, you can be wherever you want. Don't worry about it so much, as long as it's not away. So, the first posture is called overhead, right? And what does this look like in other weapons? Same thing. Yeah, the overhood, right? Or uh, the Montauk, right? Um, so this is actually what's depicted in Meyer's treatise, right? Is basically you got your, your dagger out in front of you, straight ahead, and high. So it doesn't matter exactly where it is, right? The idea is that if you have your dagger stowed in your back, and you draw it right in front of your face, it's going to end up here. So remember the cutting lines, right? There's the shutter line, the Zorn line, the middle line, the Unterzerkau line, right? Uh, all of these guards correspond to one of those lines, just like everything else in the whole system. So this is on the shuttle line, or the parting line, uh, right up straight at the top, okay? Next one, we just go over here. That's it. Uh, this is also a variant of the high guard or the overhood, so don't really worry about it too much. Next really important one down here, the Unterhood. So the Unterhood is kind of like Klug, uh, I guess. Um, the one depiction that we actually have of it in the book is somebody doing this, but that is because they're making a thrust. The actual posture is, is uh, back here. And then there's Middlehead, which is in the back way. I don't know, it doesn't matter. And then middle hood is right here on your side. And so again, if you think you have your dagger kind of stowed back here and you draw it and just leave it there, that's it, okay? So if we think about, again, sort of making attacks from these, if we think about making our uh, sort of the Meyer cutting diagram that we have. So if you start here, you can make a cut down to your lower left, reverse the blade, bring it up, back alongside that way. And then what happens when we bring it down here? It gets really awkward to make a cut with any kind of strength from down here. So don't. Keep the pommel forward and bring the pommel back up. And that actually is a really important action that Meyer uses quite a few times as a follow-up after you've made a parry uh, to Colton. Come here. I want to demonstrate this. Right? So as Colton makes an attack, right? Pow, I've got his arm now, and I'm twisting it out, and then I go wham! And put the pommel right on his elbow and break the little shit out of his arm. <laughs> Hold the tacks, right? Make the parry, control his arm, and then strike to the elbow. And just imagine that just going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, you ever break like just broken celery, right? That's fun. So. <laughs> so all that you guys to do now. So we'll go over just a, a really basic sort of cover. What I want you to do is mostly practice attack. And what I want you to mostly practice is this, right? The really powerful overarm attack, the thrust. So, one thing to keep in mind, as you're coming up, if I'm attacking Jason, right? What I don't want to do is this, right? So again, this kind of idea that we want to keep our arms really close to ourselves because we don't want to, we don't really actually want what Meyer tells us to do to happen to you in a modern situation, so we don't keep our we don't extend our arms. It's exactly the opposite, right? I want to stab him to death. What he's usually wearing, rather than this like cool under armor, is quite thick clothing, right? And so what I need to do is put all of the power of my body into this one attack, and I'm going to do that by attacking with my hips and extending my arm all the way that I can. Okay? So we're just going to partner up and just sort of, you know. Sends and cuts, what Jason is going to do is not even try to stop my arm, he's just going to kind of smack it aside with his left hand, right? As it comes up, just like that, right? So, just that way, yeah. Just like that. And so we don't want, we don't need, um, if you feel more comfortable with masks, I suggest putting them on. Because what I want you to do is think about, again, making this quick.
quick and powerful. <laughs> <laughs> the parker is mostly there to have a target of some kind. Um, <laughs> right? Um, and that's about it. We're going to get out a focus pad and we're going to let people really go ham on the stuff for mm -hmm. now. Just try to get into, again, the flow, think about your arm being nice and extended. And then the other role that the partner has is just sort of watching your form. So if Jason were to make an attack, right, I'm going to see, okay, speed's good, arm's extended, hips moving, that kind of thing, right? If you've done stuff with us before, you can try to put in some of the, the, the really fancy hip work as you go through. Don't feel like you need to, but all I want you to do, again, concentrate mostly on just keeping the arm extended. That's the biggest part. Like I said, there's two ways that you can deal with somebody attacking you, especially if somebody, like, somebody has really crappy structure, you don't really need to worry about them at all, you just stab them. Uh, if, on the other hand, they have good structure, don't run, just, right? There's two ways we can deal with it, right? One of them is by stopping their arm, right? By opposing their structure with your own. And you can do this in a ton of different ways. You can do it with your left arm uh, on the inside, you can do it with your left arm on the outside, you can do it with your hand, uh, inverted, this is um, the, Meyer calls this the inverted uh, grip, uh, or the reverse grip, or you can do it with your hand forward like that. That's just with your left hand. With the dagger, you can also make a barring action like this uh, with the dagger, which we're going to talk about a lot because this is one of sort of Meyer's key uh, sort of systemic principles here. Um, you can also get over their arm, right, like that. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. And for the, for the most part, stopping their arm, you really have to trust that your structure is in place. We're going to work on that next week. What I want to work on this week is opposing their positive structure by more or less moving away from it, right? So if blocking their arm with real good structure is earth bending, okay? <laughs> this is more like water bending, okay? So as, so what I want to us to work on, this is actually something that comes from Andre Carnfine, and this is, uh, Another guard that I didn't teach you earlier is called the Kreuzfeld in Meyer. It just means the cross guard. And all it is is like this. Your, arm, your dagger is sort of laid across your arm, and your arms are crossed with usually your right arm sort of over top of it. If you kind of sh don't have a dagger and you shift this off to the side, this is what Andre Karnfeit calls schlüssel or key. So what we're going to work on is somebody attacking you with a dagger, and what you're going to do is oppose them in a key, and this is actually going to be uh, it's going to introduce some of the footwork that we need to work on, right? Because in order to oppose them weakly, in, in the context of strength versus weakness, and like a strong bind versus a weak bind, remember? Um, if we think about like a hanging parry is weak, and a Zornhau with a suppressing cut as strong, strong would be opposing their, their structure with yours. Weak is avoiding their structure by moving away. So the, um, the Schlüssel that uh, Parnfeit teaches, if you're over here in the key, somebody attacks you, you use your right arm basically to move their arm aside. You hit their arm on the outside. Uh, if you can grip their wrist, grip it, and you step. Okay? So what you're doing is you're making, uh, to go through it one more time, very slowly, right? From here, you make that kind of initial parry. Remember to put your hip into this turn. You can take your back leg and step out this way. Uh, so you get to the, to the outside of your attacker. You put your left arm against their elbow, and then you step with a triangle step out the other way. So you put keeping pressure on the elbow and keeping the grip on the wrist. And from here, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Right, and it's, that's it. I mean, this is obviously not always going to work, but what we want to do is just sort of drill. We're going to have masks on with this one. But again, very slowly, Colton's going to come and attack. Right, make my initial parry. You might want to take that glove off for everybody else. Um, kind of grab and control the wrist. 
pressure on the elbow, step out, and triangle step. Okay? So remember, my triangle step is just this. That's it. It doesn't matter which foot is forward. That's it. That's a triangle step. You're making a triangle with your feet. So, make that initial parry. Step out with a passing step. Control the elbow with a triangle step. And throw them out of space. Don't actually throw them out of space. But one real quick note, if you are the attacker, somebody with a mask. Alex. Uh, I'm the one who attacked you. So, if you're, if you're the attacker, it's, uh, I think it's best just to, to do a basic passing step with this attack. Right? So, remember that everything in Myers' whole system is about the cutting lines. Right? So with this one, try to imagine that I'm trying to cut along the door line. Right? So this would be B to F. I think it's the line. Okay. Uh, and actually, the way to remember which one's which, right, is A, B, C, D, F, G, A. Very easy. It's like, it's like a plane. And all you have to do is remember that the very first one is A, shadow line, that's the first cut you learn, and it's the most important line. Anyway, so I wanna I wanna basically hit him in the ear with my dagger. Or up along here in the nice juicy soft bits, or you know, above the rib cage, in the chest, that kind of thing. Uh, basically all I want to do is passing step and attack this one. Okay? So it should be, if he doesn't do anything, I should be able to hit him with impunity and with strength and structure, right? Okay. So that's if you're doing less than that, you're kind of doing a disservice to your partner. Obviously, don't break anybody's bones. But the idea is that I should be putting some force and effort into this because none of this stuff works without it, right? If I'm just doing this, it's not going to teach him how to fight with a dagger. It's not going to teach him how to defend against a dagger. It's not going to teach anything. So what we want to do is put a little bit of effort into it so that if he doesn't do it right, he's going to know immediately because I'm going to have the superior struggle. So, right? Did he do it right no. at that time? No, he's pretty much dead. Right? If, on the other hand, he opposed it with good structure, right? Did he defend himself that time? Yes. yes, very well. Right? So that's what we want to do, right? That's the whole kind of idea of why we're teaching this attack. So it's as beneficial for the person attacking as it is for the person being attacked if you put effort and structure into it, and especially if you attack before they're ready. <laughs> right? So, so basically all I want to say is that don't we have masks and everything on for a reason, right? This is why we're all wearing masks in this drill, is because I want you all to, like, none of this stuff works unless you put force and structure behind it. Uh, and you'll find that the more force and structure they put into this, the easier all this stuff actually works, right? That was the, the big kind of epiphany for me when I was doing dagger stuff, is that if you're just sitting here fencing like this, none of this shit's gonna work. It's not gonna work, right? What you need to have is somebody attacking with clearly with the knowledge that I'm going to hit and kill this guy in my first attack because look at that chunk doesn't even have a deck. So I come up and I attack, and suddenly somebody who's barely had any kind of training at all throws me on my face. Right? That wasn't fate. He did that to me because I put a lot of effort into my attack. And remember this: the this, the the whole kind of fiction of this is that I'm pissed off and drunk and angry enough that I'm trying to murder him as quickly as I can. Right? So sometimes that means I'm going to come up and I'm just drop my dagger and do that. Right? Other times that might mean I try to come up like this. Hey man. Right? And you got to be able to know what to do either way. And it's not going to work unless the attacker puts some oomph into it. Okay? That's pretty much it. But just remember, that's the reason we've got the forearm protectors and gloves and everything. So go ahead and use as much force as both of you are comfortable. Okay? And also, obviously, it shouldn't need to be said, but if your partner, if you feel like they are attacking too much, tell them, or flag me down and I'll tell them. Because we all need to be up at a level we're comfortable with, okay? And if that means trading partners or finding somebody who's at a force level you're comfortable with, that's okay too.
So, left arm. So left arm carries, right? There are two ways you can do them, like we said earlier, pull, apply to me. Okay, so there are the straight, which is you thumb up. So as the attack comes in, right, you resist by basically, you're never gonna try to catch it like this, you can do other stuff. But your thumb can be up toward their arm, or it can be reversed, which means thumb down toward their elbow. So there's a very natural sort of kinesthetic thing that you can use to remember when this is appropriate. And if you are, if you want to sort of resist them from the inside, right, you want the reverse grip. Okay. Because it's very easy for you to do that, right? And if you are forced to come at them from the outside, you want your uh, wrist, or you want it to do the, the straight grip, right? So the idea behind this one is you always want to control their dagger arm, right? And so as we kind of did our, the last drill, right, the whole idea was you make this sort of initial sort of almost blade-like parry to their wrist, and then you grab, and then you put pressure to the elbow first. Most important is warding away the dagger, then controlling the arm, and then, you know, doing mean stuff with the guy. So it's the same with the left hand. So what we're gonna kind of focus on is just making that kind of initial offset, that initial, I guess you can you call it an offset. As it comes in, right, something like that, then you take control of it, because at this point, you stop their motion, and then you can do whatever you need to do to them, right? So all I want you guys to do is work on, your partner's gonna make basically 10 sort of big, again, well-structured attacks, and I want you to do 10 parries from the inside, 10 parries from the outside. That's it. Then we're going to do attacks from the lower line, and it's the same principle. So, obviously it's much more difficult for Colton to attack from the lower opening, um, from that side, from this grip, right? It's goofy and impossible. So he's going to switch grips to forward grip, right? Then he's going to try to go down, and it's the same thing. It's make a parry, like that, or make a parry from just like that. It's a little bit easier when they come from below to actually grip the wrist. There's less chance of like the thumb getting hit, right? Um, if he's coming in with a big old powerful overhaul, and I try to go waha and catch the wrist like that, it's a good chance that I can just hit it with my thumb and then my thumb is shattered. Uh, and I'm dead. So like that's not gonna matter that much because there's a dagger in my chest. So it's always again trying to sort of get your arm straight out. Think of it as like kind of a blade, and then putting pressure on whatever side you're on. So if you're inside, push them up to the outside. If you are on the outside, push them to the inside. We can also do the same thing, we're going to do the same thing next week with the dagger. And it's the same sort of thing, you can parry this way, or you can parry that. Right? And it's almost always whatever side kind of you're going on. But anyway, this one, 10 attacks like this, you just make a really good parry, and again, Kick into it, and if they put a lot of oomph into the attack, they should, if you have a shitty structure, be able to hit you. So wear a mask, obviously. Uh, but that's kind of what we're practicing. So you want to calibrate how much force and how much structure you need to have. And if, you know, send a few of them that are a little bit broken, right, to see if that attack actually hit you. Because you need to know what that feels like. Because you need to know how to respond to it, or you're dead. Okay? You mean, pardon me, if you send a couple of parries that are broken? Yes, yeah, you send a couple of parries that you know, you think are probably not that strong. Just because I want you to feel what it feels like when it gets crumpled. Because that might happen if you have a shooting strike. So again, the, the easiest way, if you kind of think about it as sort of just shooting a thrust, if you think about it as it upsets it with the sword, right? It upsets it with the sword, it's kind of going like, like that. If you think of it with your left hand as the sword, Right? You're just shooting a thrust right into the inside of their wrist or the outside of their wrist with the blade again. Then what I want you to do next, right, is that we're going to sort of introduce the kind of derby sort of style training stuff. So what we're going to do is one person in the hot seat with a mask on, everything else on, everyone else is going to come out and attack them one at a time. And it's just Limit ourselves to the really basic stuff that we worked on today. So you're making a pretty, pretty widely telegraphed attack, either from overhead, from either opening, or with straight grip or forward grip from underneath. That's it. Okay. So put some force into it. We've got the gear on. Um, Jackets are probably going to be if you have one. Um, but uh, 
But yeah, so what I want the people being attacked to do is make a simple parry with your left arm. That's it. It can be the inside or the outside. It can be like striking it away and moving aside, or it can be something like going in and trying to get a controlled arm wrap, something like that. Doesn't matter. Make sense? So to demonstrate, I will start by being attacked by all of you kind of people. So yeah, you don't have a dagger. Yeah, you don't have a dagger. Otherwise, you can also feel free to do power and fight swizzle. Because I think that's rad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically it's an empty hand attack or it's empty hand defense. It doesn't matter if what. You you guys should also have an ass gun just in case. Yeah. Just in case. <coughs> you don't want that. Is that awesome? Mm -hmm. Yes. Alright, cool. I'd like you to record this. Cool. And then we can move the we can move that aside because it's not okay. right. Oh, we got one more. 